If you come to Korea, someone will probably recommend you Intadong, a famous shopping district where you can find hundreds of yeah, traditional stationery shops, craft work shops, simple souvenir shops, but also uh, art galleries uh, and a lot of tea houses. Would you recommend them Intadong? I always do. You always do? Oh yeah, I'm big on uh, that people should stay around here. Now I've been here many times and I honestly find it very difficult to, to see the appealing side of Intadong. <laughs> But hopefully today, with the uh, help of David Mason, we can find some uh, attractive side of Inzadong. Hi David. Hey, hello. You know, Inzadong is a shopping district and I always thought it was nothing more than just shopping. Simple souvenirs. Shopping is not necessarily my cup of tea, to be honest. But let me tell you, I couldn't have been more wrong. I was just never curious enough. But today, I am. And no, this building won't play a part in understanding Inzadong. Let's start with this remarkable art piece. You can't miss it. This is the very opening of Insadong at, it, at its southern mouth of Insadong Street, and its background is extraordinary. That's the same painting that's behind the king in the palace. It sits behind the throne of the king. Kyongbukung? Yeah, every palace. Every palace. Every palace, and in the even in minor palace rooms where there's an extra throne for the king or queen, that painting sits behind. That painting is the symbol of the sovereignty of Korea. It is five mountains, with the central one as the highest. Five mountains, north, south, east, west, center. They are the kings of earth, the very best of earth. Then the sun and the moon, the king and sun queen and of moon. heaven, everyone would agree. Then the red pine trees, king of all plants to Koreans. Then two waterfalls going into an ocean, the great waters of the world. It's the natural biosphere, the ecosphere. It represents all of nature except one thing. There's one factor, can you see Bart, one thing that is missing, that is not in that painting. Nope, I didn't guess. No animals. <laughs> oh, no animals. Oh. There's no animals. <laughs> Why? Because who's the best animals? It's humans. And who's the best human? The king. And so when the king of Korea would sit in front of this painting, he completes it. No way. Is that really the intention, Dave? The ideology the behind this. And it's on our money. Right here on oh, the yeah. 10,001 bill. Right there, that painting with the red pine trees. Uh huh and such, it's on the money behind King Sejong. It's an eye catcher. I have a side quest for you today. Inta Don. Uh, 200,000 won for you. Oh. And I want you to think hmm. what you can buy in Inta Dong that really represents Inta Dong. By the way, you can keep it. 200,000. Huh? 200,000. All right. <laughs> because I know this is a shopping district, but there are a lot of tourist traps as well. There are. But if you think, hey, this represents Inta Dong, Alright, uh -huh. there's some good honest places. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see. Just think about it along the way. Do you think you can do that? That is a, that's <laughs> I, a fun challenge. I'm curious what David will buy in such a place. Now, a neighborhood is just a neighborhood. Fill it with shops, and it's a neighborhood with shops. But knowing the stories behind everything, the neighborhood suddenly becomes so much more attractive and unforgettable. Inzadong is one of those places. Nice murals on the wall, yeah, representing kind of a, a new... Koreans do not do random graffiti, you know, property damaging graffiti, but they allow graffiti projects like this. They're doing the graffiti as we speak. Mostly so. <laughs> this alley in Sedong, which is quite crooked, we will see it bends, because it used to be along a stream. There was a natural stream running here, and, and this was the center for the craftsmen, for the aristocracy. The mansions of the greatest noble families are up in what we call Bukja, mm -hmm. which is the next neighborhood north of Insadon, directly north here, where all the mansions were of the greatest noble families and still very charming houses in alleyways. Now, this was the neighborhood of craftsmen and tradesmen who served the nobility, they were here. This is where the nobility went shopping. And one of those shops would have been a stamp craftsman, of which you can still find many today. But this tiny shop is one of my favorites. People used to use all these kind of stamps as their personal name, their signature, essentially your signature. And your stamp was your legal signature. Like the father of a family, the patriarch, if he's gonna sell a piece of land, 
you know, that stamp would do it. And so if somebody stole your stamp, the many stories like this, the oldest son steals father's stamp and puts it on some document to get a loan or sell the family land or something. Father finds out and he's so angry. But you could do that. If you have the stamp, you have the authority, including there are very big ones that were for the king. So the king kept that in a wooden box with him all the time for the fear that somebody could steal it and put it on some document and it would make that document law. Oman one, 50,000. I wonder about the most expensive one. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, wow. The dragon. Oh. 700,000. 700,000. This is worthy of a king. Oh, this is heavy. Oh, yeah. It's jade. It's jade. Real jade. But it's beautiful. Yeah. But don't you think this store is fantastic? Tiniest little studio, but he's a real master and an expert. I couldn't stop myself from making one with, of course, the name Aiko Button. It was 80,000 won. Around 1900 and afterwards, a lot of the nobility started to lose their position because they would oppose the Japanese or have some other bad luck, bad fortune in the new dawning modern world. And the Japanese would take away their, their lands, their businesses, take it away from them, maybe send them to prison or otherwise they might get into gambling and lose their family fortune in a way that they couldn't under the old system. Noble families going broke, bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And so they come out of their mansions with like thousand year old piece of pottery, 500 year old painting, and come down here saying to the, to the tradesmen, to the artisans, can you find somebody to buy this for me? Uh, buy this from me, you know, I need $5 for this, I need $10 for these great artifacts, national treasure level quality things. So this becomes the antique district. And also, many antique stores remain today. And don't be afraid to visit them. They display beautiful treasures, some of which they back all the way to Joseon, Goryeo or Silla. They are part of Inse Dong's story, like little museums. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, hang, yeah. oh, hang, jungle. Yeah, oh, oh, uh, uh, five generals in the five directions. That's different. Uh, uh, the, well, that's the scholar spirit, yeah, the spirit of scholarship. And oh, Sanchin Bosa. I feel like I brought David to the candy store. We got the Chilsung Do. Chilsung Do is Jesok Bull and Chilsung. Four Buddhas on the top here, and three here. It's the seven stars of the Big Dipper. He's Jesuk Buddha, which means the Indra, manager of heaven. And then the southern stars around here. So usually she wouldn't allow people to film inside, but I got special permission, and I really appreciate it, to let the viewers know at home. So you can come here and visit, but don't bring your cameras. You're a magic man. Lovely, lovely stuff, which God knows you'd be happy to have in your house if your house was bigger. Oh, wow. <laughs> look at this furniture, look at the wood grain patterns and the lovely metal work, which is the only artificial decoration. Okay, a real antique. Oh, oh 150 years. Yes. Too high. Too high. <laughs> oh, oh my, yes. Three million one. Uh, Three million million one. one. Three million. Sangak Boda, can sign I was like, it's worth it if it's. It's a, worth it, right? If, if it's, it's a certified real antique. Good, Nana. Hanguk Horangi Kirim? No more choya. Oh, choya. No, most of no more choya. Horangi Kirim? Horangi Kirim? Uh, Buddha, or, 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 Mary's Alley, and nobody knows who Mary was. <laughs> this is a mystery. Nobody knows who is who, Mary. Who, who is Mary? <laughs> but apparently, it was some woman who had discovered this as an antique district and told everybody else. Now that the mystery of Ing Sedong's antique and craftsmanship popularity is cleared up, let's focus on our side quest: a 200k worthy souvenir from Ing Sedong, as decided by David. And let me tell you, it's no easy mission. Now here is something with these are not antiques, but these are modern made. 
but they look like these are reproductions of national treasures of great Korean pottery of a rather high quality. I've always wanted one. What is this? Is it a well, turtle? It, it, it's a... A dragon. It, it's a dragon face, turtle body, a turtle shell, and it functions as a teapot or wine pot. It's beautiful. And it's just simply a treasure. 혹시 그거 얼마예요? 어, 왜 이렇게 말을 잘해요? 아니에요. 300만원인데요. 300만원. 네. 300만원. 이유는저기전통도예인데요그런데누가빚었느냐고려시대에있었던도자기예요네그런데누가빚었느냐고려시대에있었던도자기예요네그런데누가빚었느냐고려시대에있었던도자기예요네그런데누가빚었느냐고려
as their building got too old and condemned, one of the greatest bulgogi beef restaurants ever, really classic, had a tragic fire, a big fire I, burned down, and they replaced it with a tourist shopping mall of tourist souvenirs that we will see. It's horrible. By the middle of the 2000s, we started getting into Chinese tourists. We went from zero Chinese tourists to suddenly millions here. Ooh. And Insadong became one of their favorite districts. The bus, 10 buses at a time would unload at one end or the other of Insadong and spill a thousand Chinese into the streets. Yeah. It got so crowded and they were buying cheap trinket souvenirs and cosmetics. Mm. So a lot of old traditional places disappeared and became cosmetic stores, makeup stores. So the character of this has drastically changed. Yeah. It is an, a good example of the cosmetics. cosmetic stop that obsess the Chinese and, and Southeast Asians for that matter. <laughs> Maybe Japanese. Everyone thinks Korean cosmetics are the best. Yep. From looking at Korean models and pop stars, I would have no idea. Uh, my wife says she thinks Korean cosmetics are very good. So. Uh, there you go. Europeans these days, they say the same thing. Now this is extraordinary because this was a tea district, like I've already said, mm -hmm. really devoted to Korean tea, considered the capital of Korean tea as far as any urban place. Now, when the, let's call it the Starbucks revolution uh -huh. uh, globally, right, of really high quality coffee at a higher price, uh, broke out in the world. I was amazed the first time I tried it at a Starbucks. I thought, wow, that is really good coffee. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not much bad. better than the instant powder I, I do at home. It was a revolution, surely, and it came to Korea and it broke really big. People say that Korea has more Starbucks per square kilometer than any other urban area in the world. That's it is really number crazy one in density it. of Starbucks. <laughs> That's really crazy. And certainly you notice it, they're everywhere. Starbucks came here and really wanted to open a coffee shop here in Insadong, the capital of tea. And the Insadong local association said, no, no way, we would never permit that. No coffee here. It became a fight that went on for like five years. Uh -huh. Finally, they struck a deal where they had to put the name up there, you see, in Korean alphabet. Uh -huh. Not every Starbucks in the entire world uses the English alphabet in Russia or China, but in this case only, they put it in the Korean alphabet from being used in the front of the building. And they required that uh, they had to start offering tea in there also. Uh -huh. Not only just coffee drinks. And so Starbucks started with like a green tea latte, which has actually become very popular in its other branches and yeah. such, and even around the world. I've seen it in many Starbucks. Uh, yes, and it started here huh? because they had to come up with some tea drinks that they could sell at a high price. So it's modern enough to be Yeah, bombing. <laughs> Though a bit surprising, we found this real cool knife museum, free of entrance. If all that Insanong stuff isn't yours, this could be a good attempt. There's some real cool pieces here. Oh, imagine, oh, what I can... <laughs> imagine wielding some of these. Oh, wait, are these? Collectibles from Lord of the Rings movie? Collectibles, definitely. Moving on, we noticed that many of the old Hanoks have disappeared, or are about to disappear. The redevelopment fences are up and made it difficult for us to find the old Insadong church. So we're looking for a church. That you also must visit, even if it's only for its story. If we can find it, of course. It's not oh. the way to the church. It doesn't go there. Oh, uh, we have to go that way. He's a charming Hanok. Yes, indeed. Oh, this looks like somebody's living here, actually. There's a, there's a table with oh, restaurant food. Oh, hello. 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 Well, they wear this mask. Ah, Ah, yeah, Ah, yeah, 
네. 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 오케이 나중에 봬요. 나중에 놀러 와요. 네. <웃음> Maybe like this. An old i n c i d e n There's no way to get to the church. Oh, this looks like the parking. Oh, that's the back door. Why don't you go up there and test the door? David. Yes. The glorious entrance to a glorious church. And there we go. Presbyterian Church. This is one of the earliest Christ, uh, Protestant Christian churches ever built in Korea. They built the very first one over in Jungdong, which you already covered with Jaka. The Methodist and, church. The very first Methodist church. I was 1884. <laughs> 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 This church is where many important meetings were held for the Korean independence movement against Japanese colonialism. Then the 1919 March 1st independence movement against Japanese colonialism. Many important meetings were held here. They also, in this building, they did the translation of the declaration from Korean. They had already written it in Korean and in classical Hanja Chinese characters. They translated to English with the help of the missionary here in this building. Thus, it's an important site. for the Korean independence movement, its history, which is very important to all Korean patriotism and nationalism. And no matter all the great reconstruction that's going on in this neighborhood, I'm sure they will never tear this down. We're still on an Insa buying mission. 200K is still in our federal reserves and endless buying options make it difficult. Will he buy an old traditional Korean flute maybe? Or a giant calligraphy brush? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I think they're gonna do the big. The they big really water. do that. Soak that in ink and then do a. Favorite one here, the back chunk. The the butcher. How about the book in Korea's oldest bookstore? Or lovely prints and paintings, but they're a bit pricey to be honest. Pretty much, I'm pretty sure we can negotiate the price. Yes, yes. Oh, man. Mm. Uh, after checking almost every shop, David made up his mind. But before we buy, let's make it to the end of the street. There's a sculpture that I only noticed now. This is the northern mouth of Insadong. Yes. The northern either entrance or exit. And the very symbol of Insadong is right here, a giant writing brush. Oh, I, why I never noticed this. A giant, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to represent the culture of this district. Right. The old scholarly gentlemen of Korea, they said the brush is the soul of the gentleman. His soul, his inner heart is represented by his writing brush. At the exact same time, the Japanese samurai developing their militaristic culture where they said the sword is the soul of the of the gentleman, of the samurai, the sword is his heart, but here, the writing brush. So Voltaire said the pen is mightier than the sword, and this is truly that contrast between the writing instrument and the sword. And when it came to the, Im the great Imjin invasion of 1592, when hundreds of thousands of samurai came to Korea, it turned out the sword was mighty. <laughs> Sorry to say. All these writing brushes were chopped in half. David Mason has really made his like decision. This piece with a turtle shell, turtle figure, but with a dragon head. I like it and too. It's a lovely little teapot design. You could put wine in here yeah. or even liquor. All right, I consider all right. this a treasure and even an heirloom that my grandchildren will inherit someday. Insa yes. don't worthy. Insa don't worthy. So. All right, all right. Cash, no, cash it up. 
you get a pretty steep discount here. <laughs> Maybe it's a camera, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I could have gone steeper, but I don't like to be a cheapskate. I don't mm -hmm. haggle way, way down on it like you would in Indonesia or Turkey. Yeah. Get down to the lowest bottom price where they're still making a decent profit, but an hour of haggling, you never do that in Turkey. You ask for a discount one time, you get a good one step discount, that's it. If you argue more than that, it's quite impolite. Yeah, You're yeah. Insulting the seller or the artist. I Mis love, mission accomplished. I love there comes that. Anita. Good cargo meet me, Moya. Oda. Okay. There comes Anita. We spent all our inside on. And uh, again, it was a pleasure to have you on the show, David. Yeah, yeah my pleasure. We learned a lot about Inza. I think I rediscovered my interest. Ah. And inside home? Yeah. Honestly, it was a little bit gone. You were saying before you didn't think it was so interesting, but now I showed you that it really still is. You definitely did. What is considered inside home is an area with several smaller donks. To me, this area felt like shopping with a taste of Korean nobility. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next dong. Haru, that's a scammer? Yeah, it's a scammer. Uh. He, gives you, he gives you this little tablet of missionary Buddhist yeah, thing for yeah, free yeah, like and then he asks you for money yeah for it for a, yeah. ten, a donation it's, it's not very Buddhist like right 20,000 <laughs> it's not really a monk <laughs> no. Oh, no no no, no you're, but no, you're a no. scammer dude yeah <laughs> where's your temple <laughs>